The backstory of the sonnets and the players involved are hidden within the italicized words. They grouped together by the proximity of their numbers and like other codes in the verse are understood when read as if they were Hebrew texts from right to left. When the italicized words are defined, they reveal Alexander Waugh's theory that Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford, persuaded Henry Rosalie, the 3rd Earl of Southampton, to father a child with their shared mistress Penelope Rich. Here I'm going to present an understanding of these words within this context. Reading from right to left, the first group of words is in Sonnet 153. Cupid is italicized twice in this sonnet, indicating two male characters, and Diane's or Diana, representing a single female character. Though it's not revealed yet, the two male Cupids are Edward de Vere and Henry Rosalie, and Diana's Penelope Rich. I know the V in the first Cupid is proper printing, but it also might be a hint for Vere. Throughout the sonnets, the word will is italicized exactly eleven times, in sonnets 135, 136, and 143. Eleven is a double one, suggesting will is a double or a twin. I'll explain more on this later. Next is quietus, audit, and former and heretic. Audit means to inspect or examine, and is printed two times in the italicized text in sonnets 126 and 4. It's saying to examine or look over these italicized words twice because they mean something other than what's in the verse, implying a possible double meaning. Quietus is a release from life, suggesting someone who's passed. A heretic is a baptized Roman Catholic who willfully rejects articles of faith. It's also someone who doesn't conform to accepted beliefs and doctrines. If we are talking about Oxford and examine his life, we know that he was both accused of heresy and apparently had informed on a group of fellow Catholics, a religion he had embraced for only a short while. But there's too many people who were informers or heretics that could have been dead or quietist by the time of the sonnet's printing. It's the next set of clues that I believe tells us we're talking about Edward de Vere. In sonnets 112, 114, and 119, we have siren, alchemy, and abysme. Alchemy is the process of transformation, and the siren of alchemy is a character named Melusine, the twin-tailed mermaid. Similar to the Night of the Swan, she transforms when a taboo is broken. In literary history, she first appears as the wife of Raymond in Jean D'Arra's 1393 long prose romance, The Roman de Melusine. In legend, Raymond, or Renfroy, is Raymond de Vere, the first Comte d'Anjou. He marries Melusine d'Alba of Lucine of France, giving her the name Melusine de Vere. Also, according to legend, the de Vere is descended from this line. Interestingly, it's said that de Vere conceded himself to be descended of the Dodi Nye of the Swan, and I wonder if this was him believing Melusine to be his ancestor. Melusine de Vere also has a connection to boars and boar hunting, an animal which appears on a badge associated with the de Vere's. Whoever encoded the sonnets, John D., knew of this relationship between Oxford and the ancestral lineage of Melusine, and provides us here with one of the more definitive de Vere references. In Sonnet 112, the word abyss may means abyss or a bottomless pit. This could be regarding the endless shame and disgrace de Vere, the poet in the sonnets, has brought upon himself, or a place of the dead, similar to Quietus, letting the reader know this person has passed. But with regards to alchemy, it was considered an endless pit that people sunk their entire fortunes into, trying to discover the Philosopher's Stone. The word fortune appears twice with a capital F in the sonnets, and on both occasions are related to wordplay on the number 1740. The word fortune is printed with a capital F like it's a proper name twice in the sonnets. In the fifth line of sonnet 37 is the word wealth. Wealth means rich, and is 17 words from fortunes. Count 17 words, then you get 40 for 1740. The word rich will become significant soon. In Gematria, rich is equal to 37, explaining why it's in sonnet 37. The other time fortune is spelled with a capital F is in sonnet 29. It begins with a de Vere double V, and exactly 17 letters later is the word fortune, again 1740. After the double V, the line reads, Hen in disgrace with fortune. In his video add-ons flower, Alexander Walks may tell Hen is another name for Penelope. Therefore, the line can read, Penelope in disgrace with 1740. Also, 29, or 2 times 9, is equal to 18, but we're getting to that. So the siren of alchemy is Melusine de Vere, or de Vere, and abysme, or abyss, may be referring to de Vere's endless shame, or the bottomless pit into which fortunes are spent on alchemy, fortunes being a play on 40, for 1740. But there's another meaning of abysme that I think is relevant. The abyss is also known as the void. Void is an anagram, or in Kabbalistic terms, tamura, for Ovid, which leads us to the next set of words. In Sonnets 100, 102, and 104, we have autumn, philomel, and satire. George Gascoigne wrote a satire and verse poem about the story of Philomel in the Steel Glass published in 1576. 
and at Philomel's sister Procne is named Satira or Satire. In Ovid's Metamorphosis, Procne, despite the bad omens, has a son for King Tyrius named Aetus or Aetes. Now on Metamorphosis, it's declared that the couple's wedding day, as well as the day of their son's birth, is to be celebrated with festival and song. And immediately following this, Ovid writes that Titan draws the years through five autumns. Philomel's sister Procne is called Satyra or Satire in George Gascoigne's The Steel Glass, and in Ovid's Metamorphosis, Procne or Satire gives birth to a son, after which five autumns pass. So we can infer these italicized words Satire, Philomel, and Autumn are referencing the birth of a child, specifically a son. In Sonus 93 and 98, we have Saturn and Eves. Here, relationship by equivalence is used. If Eve's the wife and Saturn's the husband, then Eve's husband is Adam and Saturn's wife is Ops. Or put another way, Eve is to Saturn who Ops is to Adam. And Ops means plenty or riches. In Greek mythology, Ops is Rhea, meaning flowing or wealth, which also means riches. The key word here is rich, and the fact that she's a goddess of fertility and motherhood lets us know that rich, or Penelope rich, is the mother. In Sonnet 78 is the word alien, followed by the word pen, and in other works of the time, pen is an abbreviation for the male anatomy. So an alien pen means that another man is doing the honors. In Sonnet 56 is the word interim. An interim is a pause or an interval, but it's also defined as a temporary or provisional arrangement. In my first video on the sonnet number code, I explain how Adonis represents Jesus, Helen's Grecian statues is the planet Venus, and Mars' sword is a reference to Oxford. Here they're interpreted a little differently. Venus and Adonis refers to the poem, and in the video Adam's flower, Wall explains how Adonis is Henry Rosely, Venus is Penelope Rich, and the boar symbolizes Edward de Vere. Mars, Venus, and Adonis are also kind of set up like equivalents, similar to Eve, Saturn, and Sonnets 93 and 98. Just as the consort of Adonis is Venus, the consort of Mars is Nereo, the personification of valor. The Latin equivalent is virtus, or manly virtue, vir meaning man. This too is a de Vere reference. Also, the symbol for Mars is a spear, possibly alluding to Shakespeare. So again, Adonis is Henry Rosely, Venus is Penelope Rich, and Mars is Edward de Vere. In Sonnet 20 is the word Hughes. Initially, I thought this was a homophone referring to someone named Hughes. It's been proposed that a William Hughes was Edward de Vere's son, and the initials WH in the dedication are his. I also thought it might have been printed in Sonnet 20 because the 20th letter in Latin gematria is V for Vere. But Hughes means to sculpt, shape, or make, and here it means something or someone is being shaped or made. Incidentally, when read from right to left, the WH initials in the dedication become HW for Henry Rosely. In Sonnet 4, we get another spelling of the word audit. Again, audit was printed two times, telling us to examine these words twice for another meaning. And finally, we get to the word rose. This could be the Rosy Cross Brotherhood making a statement signing their work, but when it's read in context with all the preceding words, we're being told that the arrangement between Edward de Vere, Penelope Rich, and Henry Rosely, the alien pen, produces a child or hues a rose, making this child, this rose, a rosely. So from the beginning, if we read the italicized words from right to left, there's two men, the two cupids or lovers, and a woman, Diane's or Diana. Will is printed eleven times, meaning a double one. Audit is printed two times, instructing us to examine these words twice. Someone who's passed away that was an informer and a heretic or accused of being both. There's a siren of alchemy, Melusine de Vere, and the abyss is either a reference to fortune or the void, an anagram for Ovid. Characters and events from Ovid's and Gascoigne's works alluding to a son being born. Someone named Rich is the mother. Another man is the father. There's a temporary arrangement. More names for Henry Rosalie, Penelope Rich, and Edward de Vere. And this arrangement, or interim, hues a rose. Traditionally, children inherited their father's name, so this is telling us the child is a rose, or a rosely. This can also be explained through alchemy. In alchemical terms, a rose can symbolize the birth of a child. The red rose is regarded as the masculine solar spirit, or sulfur, and the white rose represents the feminine lunar soul, or salt. The combination of white and red roses, or spirit and soul, symbolizes the birth of the philosopher's child, or mercury. 
Also, a single golden or gilded rose symbolizes the completion of the great work or some consummate achievement in the laboratory or in personal alchemy. The golden rose means a successful marriage of opposites producing a golden child. It seems De Vere was infatuated with Henry Rosalie and the way he looked, so he made an arrangement with Penelope Rich, who was also known for her beauty, to have a child for him with Rosalie. The child turned out to be a son, and though Rosalie was raised as Henry De Vere, the 18th Earl of Oxford, during that time this would have caused a great scandal and had to be kept secret. There might be something more to quiet us in the two audits. In Italian, udite means heard, and I was wondering if there's another play on words going on here. In Sonnet 126, quietus could mean quiet and audit or udite heard. So quiet or deaf and udite heard or hear, quiet heard or deaf hear, devir. And next, in Sanskrit, udit is a male name meaning groan, ascending, or shining. If we include the word audit using the Sanskrit translation as a udit, it would read the arrangement De Beer has with Rich and Rosalie who use a growing or shining rose. About 11, 11 is a double one. Looking at the Roman numeral for two, it's an 11 with the top and bottom line, one and one meaning two. It's the same as the astrological symbol for Gemini representing the twins Castor and Pollux. The word will appears in italics exactly 11 times. This is telling us that will is a double one or simply a double. And because 11, the double, is also a Roman numeral for two, this explains why the first severe reference in the verse appears in Sonnet 2. It also explains why the portrait in the first folio has an 11, or a Roman numeral 2, or a Gemini symbol drawn on the collar directly beneath the chin of Shakespeare, suggesting that this is the face or mask of a double. It's been suggested on the sides of the collar are what look like spears. There's two on his right and four on his left. Two in French is de, and four in German is vir. De, vir, or de vir. So this face, or mask, is De Vere's double. I want to thank Mr. Waugh for mentioning me in his last video. It's greatly appreciated. Anyone interested in the Shakespeare authorship question should definitely check out his YouTube channel. His videos are the best you'll find on the subject. Thank you for watching, and I hope to have another one out soon.